Hey everybody, today I want to talk about ammonia spikes. I had a mystery snail die recently and while I did catch it in time, I pulled it out of the tank either right as it was dying or immediately after it had died uh, and it didn't really have time to start decomposing in the tank, but a mystery snail, especially this one, was a pretty old one, it was a couple years old, uh, it was a pretty hefty amount of I'll say biological material that would have been breaking down in the tank and it was only a 20 gallon tank. So I don't know if this would have caused an ammonia spike in the tank or not, but it got me thinking about it and I do want to discuss ammonia spikes in a general sort of way today. Uh, I always try to focus on things that I think about uh, when I first got into the hobby that I either found intimidating or I was worried about, uh, things that seemed to be, uh, you know, people put a lot of importance on them. And ammonia spikes was something that came up fairly often, and I used to worry about them a lot. Uh, people would act as though if you had a single uh, neon or a guppy or something in your tank die, then, you know, you better get it out of there right away or you're going to have this ammonia spike and it's going to kill all your fish and so on and so forth. And so I used to be really um, worried about that kind of thing. Every time I saw a dead fish, I would immediately go and get a net and get it out of there. And I'm not saying that's a bad idea. You should still you know, go ahead and get dead fish out of your tank. That's always a good idea for hygiene reasons. Uh, this is definitely a do as I say, not as I do moment, but we'll get to that uh, as the video progresses. So getting a fish out of your tank is a good idea. That's certainly not a bad idea, but it's also not critical. I was always told by people that, you know, it, it was a lot of urgency was put on it, put it that way. Over time, I began to realize that these small fish dying in the tank, more often than not, would go unnoticed. I, you know, one day I'd notice I have, you know, nine neons instead of ten neons. I have no idea where that tenth neon went, and so on and so forth. And I began to realize that what was happening a lot of times was these fish would die, they'd get caught under a rock or in all of the plants I've got in my tanks, and they would just decompose and break down and be eaten by the animals in the tank, whether that was snails or the fish or even just the microbial life in the tank would just break it down and the tank would simply absorb these dead fish without ever spiking my ammonia uh, in any noticeable way. Now keep in mind I don't go around testing my ammonia on a daily basis so if there was a tiny tiny little spike in ammonia while one of these fish was decomposing I can't say that's not possible but I think it's pretty unlikely. Uh, I will say as far as the nitrogen cycle goes um, Whenever there's a little bit of a spike in nitrites, I tend to associate that with cloudy water in my tank. I don't know why, but that seems to go hand in hand. If your nitrates, if your nitrites bump up a little bit, your, your tank will tend to get cloudy. So if I had a, even just a little tiny bit of an ammonia spike, then I'm probably also going to have a corresponding nitrite spike, and therefore I would probably have seen some cloudy water at some point that I was unable to explain why you know, that is the case. And I have had that happen, but again, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll get to that, uh, the second part of this video. So, this is what we typically think of when we think of ammonia spikes. We think of an animal died in the tank or something happened. You got a bunch of, you know, a plant died or whatever. You've got this large influx of biological material that's now breaking down and it's more than your nitrogen cycle is capable of handling and therefore it sort of builds up on the front end and you wind up having all of this ammonia develop in the tank because your nitrogen cycle can't handle it. That's what we generally think of as a nitrogen, I mean an ammonia spike. When we talk about having an ammonia spike, we usually think of a dead fish producing so much ammonia that your tank can't handle it. But in my experience, I've never had that happen, not once. Not even when I've had mystery snails die, which is what we started out in this video. That's the largest animal I've ever had die in a tank that I, that's gone unnoticed. Um, I found empty mystery snail shells in my tanks and therefore this, the snail clearly died in the tank and was just absorbed by the tank and that's a pretty hefty amount of biological material. You know, mystery snail is a lot of meat. And yet I've never had a noticeable uh, ammonia spike from that. So what would it take for one of my tanks to have an ammonia spike like that? Like my tenopoma dying in that tank and rotting away? 
you know, I, I honestly don't even know if that would do it, but my tanks are very heavily planted. They're heavily, you know, a lot of decor in them, a lot of rocks, a lot of substrate. I have a lot of overfiltration on them, lots of biological material in there. And so my tanks are kind of equipped to handle pretty heavy biological loads, and I don't really know if the slow breakdown of a fish would be enough to give me an ammonia spike. Again, a large fish like that, that's a lot of material breaking down uh, at one time, so I might see some ammonia begin uh, developing on that. Now, if you've got a tank that's got very little decor in it, and you've got a very small hang on the back, filter with just one little sponge in there for your biological material and you don't have any substrate, you've got a bare glass bottom tank or something, that might be a different story. You know, my tanks are all sort of set up around the idea that I've got a lot of biological filtration in my tanks. And something like neons and guppies and stuff like that, my tanks, you know, one of my 10 gallon tanks could absorb that even if my filter had failed. So I would need a fairly significant amount of biological material to, you know, suddenly be in my tank. A large fish would have to die in one of my tanks for me to have some sort of ammonia spike from that. So gradually, as I progressed in the hobby, my concern and my fear of that happening, you know, when I would find a dead fish in the tank, I'd immediately go check my ammonia to make sure I wasn't having some kind of ammonia spike or whatever. And, you know, after time, after time, after time of never having problems with it, you tend to stop worrying about it a little bit. I have, however, had ammonia and nitrite spikes. But that is because I've been on the other end of that spectrum, or the flip side of that coin, however you want to look at that. We started by talking about having a sudden influx of ammonia that your cycle couldn't handle, and therefore it's backing up on the front end. I've done things that have actually disrupted my cycle that has then caused a backup on the back end. You know, my, my input never changed. I was producing the same amount of waste, I was feeding the fish the same amount, and so on and so forth, and yet now I'm suddenly getting an ammonia spike. And that's not because the influx of ammonia, it's because of the lack of capability of the tank to deal with it. And I think that's a far more common reason that people have ammonia spikes. You get in there and you clean your filter a little too aggressively. Again, if you've got a tank that doesn't have gobs of stuff in it like this, it's a fairly open tank, fairly glass you know, bottom, maybe a little bit of substrate or something. There's not a lot of biological material in the tank itself and you rely solely on your filter or mostly on your filter. And if you get in there and you clean your filter a little too thoroughly or if you use a little too hot water by accident or who knows, um, there's ways that we can disrupt our nitrogen cycle and then you may start getting an ammonia spike, but it's not because you've added extra ammonia, it's because you've reduced your tank's capability of dealing with ammonia. And I think that's the far more common way that we will see nitro I keep calling them nitrogen spikes, um, ammonia spikes in our tanks and for me I have yet to really see one that's been like a spike where it's you know again the word spike makes it sound like it jumps up to five parts per million or something I've never had anything like that happen but I have had cloudy water you know I check I always tend to associate the cloudy water with the nitrites getting a little bit higher and usually when I have water clouding up in a tank that's what it turns out to be. But it's only like 0.25 parts per million or 0.5 parts per million. It's a very small amount of nitrites will cause my water to get cloudy. And again, to this day, I have no idea why that cloudy water is associated with the elevated nitrites. But it, it seems to be. Now, slightly elevated nitrites like that is no big deal, especially if it's for a short period of time, a few days till your tank sorts itself out. So I don't worry about that. Ammonia is much more toxic, and if you do get to that 0.5 parts per million, you know, you probably want to start addressing that and getting into doing a water change or whatever. But again, I've never had a spike where I've checked my ammonia and it's suddenly two or three parts per million in my tank. I've disrupted the cycle, I've noticed the water starting to get cloudy, I've checked, and it's been 0.25 or 0.5 parts per million uh, ammonia, maybe again 0.5 parts per million nitrites. Uh, or something, and that's enough to make the tank disrupted. And, and you know, you can generally spot it by you know something not working right by that point. I've never really had this big whammy, you know, up to five parts per million uh, ammonia spike. So if anybody has, I would like to hear your 
uh, experience on what happened or why it happened, how it happened, that sort of thing. But to me, I would say don't get so stressed and so worried about, you know, having a pneumonia spike because you had a guppy die or a neon die uh, or something like that. I mean, it, it's just, it, it seems really unlikely that that's going to happen unless, again, you've got minimal, minimal biological filtration, then a slight increase in bioload may overwhelm your system or whatever, but I would imagine you'd have to have such a ridiculously minimal amount of biological filtration to get yourself in that situation that, again, it's just extremely unlikely. So that's another thing that, you know, new fish keepers can probably stress out a little less about is worrying about a dead fish causing a huge nitrogen or ammonia spike. Uh, and wiping your tank out and all that kind of stuff. So again, leave your thoughts down below. I feel like I'm starting to ramble at this point. Probably already did five minutes ago, but that's how it is with me. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget this one here is my 125-gallon new world tank. Thanks again. I'll see you real soon.